Uh, good evening. This is Tom Mulvey, Chairman of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, I am going to open up the Tuesday, June 30th, 2020 meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, before we get going, we're going to do a roll call. Uh, other member of the Zoning Board of Appeals, Jeff Sutherland, are you present? Yes. And Tom Mulvey, I am both present. Uh, conducting this meeting via Zoom technology, uh, due to the town hall being closed. Uh, Jeff, one question. Can you hear me okay? Yep. All right. I know I had a little trouble with my mic last time. Okay. Okay. So uh, two things we have this evening is we have a little agenda to take care of for a minute or two, and then we'll be opening up the uh, public hearing. So should people be joining in as we go on this? Uh, we're going to just conduct a little business and then open up the public hearing. Uh, Jeff, what we had on here was um, the approval we did for 102 Chestnut Hill Road back in, on May 23rd, 2020. Yep. Um, that got um, into the town clerk and stamped by her on June 1st. So the 21-day appeal process would have ended June 22nd. Um, I did not hear that there was an appeal from her, uh, from the town clerk. So I've sent an email uh, to Diane um, to ask her um, if, if there was an appeal or no appeal, and just send the documentation back to us for our record at this point. Um, I, again, normally if there's an appeal, we usually hear from it right away. So I'm just assuming that there wasn't. Uh, but I just want the, uh, she includes the page, the page of no appeal on the variant. So I want to make sure we get it in for our records, okay? Yep. All right. Um, I know we opened just a little bit late, which is not a big deal. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna wait maybe about another 30 seconds, 40 seconds or so, so uh, Jeff, to uh, give the video and everything a chance to catch up, and yep. then we'll open up the uh, the, uh, the the public hearing. Um, I sent you a last minute text about another document I had sent you. I don't yeah, know I'm, just, I'm just looking at it right now, so. Okay, excellent. I didn't realize I had not sent that to you prior. Um, not 100% necessary to put tonight, but obviously you've got it, so that's good, thank you. And uh, I'll, I'll mention what that is once we get into the public meeting. Enjoying the nice hot weather as we wait to open this? Uh, absolutely. Be nice to be a little bit sunny, so I want to be in the pool. <laughs> How are you doing for work? Uh, busy, straight out. Uh, yeah. it's, it's, we're, we're fortunate, and knock on wood, and we did very well through this being an essential, and uh, everyone's 100% employed, and we have great safety precautions in place for all our employees and you know we're staying safe and the business is going good so yeah. you know yeah we just we just started letting guys get back on the road if need be to visit customers that's good yeah that's the next you know people have to feel safe when they're traveling and what they're doing so yeah all right so we have about three minute lag let's see what i'm going to open it up i'm going to uh, make a motion to open up the Public hearing. This is for a public hearing for, uh, sorry, it's currently 508. This is the petition of a Mr. Cesar Camoli for the property located at 294 Chestnut Hill Road. It says it's MAP 111 33. For variant pursuant to the Millville Zoning Bylaws, Chapter 100, Article 4, Subsections 100 402. Dimensional requirement. Uh, the petitioner requests relief from frontage requirements for the construction of a single family home, as well as Article 4, subsection 100-403-C, accessory building, the petitioner requests relief from the front yard and height requirements, uh, restrictions for an accessory building. Um, 
um, motion is to make this to open this. Yeah, second. Second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, so this is open. Um, Jeff, you have the package, just a little background information for those who may be viewing. Um, Mr. Camoli had applied for a variance back in, in 2017. I actually believe it was at the end of 2016. We had the final hearing on January 25th of 2017, and we did approve a variance for him to build a single family home on this property. Uh, that was the last document I had sent you. Uh, yep. That was the one back then that we did. Uh, what had happened is um, Mr. Kamoli waited for a while and when he requested a petition, I'm sorry, we re requested for a, uh, an extension. It was well past the extension date. So he decided to sit a little bit longer and then now he's come back to the board to ask for another variance uh, for the same thing. Um, the difference in this variance compared to the first variance is, you'll see in the our approval of the first variance, we did say that the existing, the existing structure, which was pre-existing uh, pre non-conforming, could remain on the lot. And it would need to be shown in all future certified plot plans. Yeah. Um, one thing we probably did not address down to crossing our T's and dotting our I's was the fact that it any home that's going to be built on the property is going to be behind the accessory building, and it's not going to be attached by a breezeway. And also the fact that um, we don't know at this particular point what the height is. Um, the distance and height of the building from the property line. <laughs> yeah, trying to try to mute you out here. Not so bad. It's okay. So what Mr. Kamoli is asking for is one to regrant a variance for a single family dwelling on the property and then for us to identify um, the accessory building in the variance so that's identified properly going forward um, you look at our, our old variance approval back on 2017 some of the reasons we said it was okay was that um, it needed 200 foot frontage. It already had 183 plus feet. So it was, it was just shy of the frontage required. And so it had 93% of the frontage needed. And the lot had about 92,000 square feet. So it had over 230% of what was required for the square footage. So we felt that it was a, and, and, and in addition, the lot had been recorded back in June 28th of 1976 and hadn't changed since then. Yeah. That's back just about prior to or just about when the zoning bylaws came into effect. Um, so, I mean, I don't, there's been no changes to the bylaws, there's been nothing or extraordinary to this. Um, you know, I in my own thing, I feel that the you know everything still meets require. Well, it doesn't need, I shouldn't say meet requirements. Everything is still in the same ballpark as when we approved it in 2017. Right. Yep. Um, I don't know if you had any thoughts or requirements on that accessory building. I mean, to identify it a little bit better. No, I mean we reviewed it before. I think we're just kind of going over what we've gone through before. I, mean, I don't see anything new here. Right. The one thing we did too is we did, if we go back to the original restrictions as well from 2017, uh, we did say that um, obviously the construction of a one, one family, single family dwelling was one of the restrictions. Yeah. Uh, 
any new building structure or the use of the land has to conform to the mill current zoning mill build zoning bylaws. The one area we were at was the existing structure, pre-existing non-conforming. Should it remain on the law that needed to be included in the certified plot plan? I think that's where we need to identify that it needs to, the variance needs to be allowed for an, an accessory building in front of a home and a height restriction for that building. Uh, the next restriction was that that lot will shall remain intact and not subject not subjected to any further subdivision. Yeah. And that there should be no access through this lot to the development of any other property bordering. If yeah. just to allow, I know there's some back, not a much back, back property, but there's a little back property back there that we, I don't think we need to have access back into it. Um, and with those restrictions, um, I think we're okay. I think the other thing I'd like to include with your support on this is that um, they will obviously need to do get some engineered drawings for where the house is going to be. Uh, it's designed, the septic system design, obviously it's positioned on the lot line. I want to make sure that the accessory building is included in that plan. Yeah, and that it's shown where it sits on the property. Uh, so the building commissioner knows exactly where it is for the lot line. Uh, and he understands how we, how this variance was done. Uh, so I think I put that on there as well. That uh, what do you think? That sound all yeah. right? No, absolutely. Um, so we're gonna keep, we'll keep those restrictions and reasons in there for that. Um, following following along of the January twenty fifth, two thousand seventeen approval, uh, with those added restrictions uh, for that building and relief for that building for front yard and height restriction from the property line. All right, so that would be the three things is the home for the frontage, the accessory building for not in the front yard, and the accessory building height restriction from property line would be the three. I don't see that there's need for anything else in there besides that, except for the restrictions that we're going to require that we mentioned. Yeah. Right, the, pre the pre existing ones. Correct. Yes, the yeah. one that we already had. Even though that variance expired in 2017, we're going to put those restrictions back on this yeah. one. All right. Um, if that's the case, so let me make sure here there's nobody. All right, I'm not seeing any other participants at this time. Um, no, I'm not seeing other participants at this time. So I think what we'll do at this point is I'm going to make a motion uh, to vote on this variance uh, with guidelines and restrictions as just voted, as ju I'm sorry, just voted, as just uh, spoken to. Yep. You second that? I second. Okay. Um, I'm going to make a motion with that. So I will vote in favor of approving this variance uh, with the restrictions replaced in 2017 and the additional add on. Uh, two items for the accessory bill. Yep. I, I say I as well. I as well. Okay, so it's a unanimous decision. Uh, the variance is, is passed uh, as required by law, the unanimous decision by the zoning board. Um, I will, with the holiday, we'll see what happens. I will get this written up, Jeff, and then sent to you as a pre approval just to make sure that everything looks right and we have it done correctly before. We'll do an electronic signature on it. Um, so yeah, I may get that done this weekend. I'll let you know, reach out to you, um, just so we can, uh, you know, pass that paperwork along before we get it down to Diane, the town clerk. Um, at this time, I'm going to make a motion to close the public hearing for 294 Chestnut Hill Road. Second. Second. All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Okay, so the public hearing is closed. That paperwork will be taken care of uh, as discussed at the public hearing. Um, at this particular point, Jeff, I don't think at, at this point we've had no other 
I told you we had some correspondence um, with one other person in regards to a variance who, who decided to kind of wait until after this pandemic may or may not do something. So right now we have no inquiries. There's no issues. There's no appeals to decisions. Um, so once we get past this one, uh, it might be quiet for a bit, but we'll, we'll keep you posted about it. Perfect. Okay. So um, I'll make a motion to close this hearing. Uh, it is right now five, I'm sorry, the here, um, meeting it is 519 p.m. Second. Second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, we're closing this meeting for the Millville Zoning Board of Appeals for June 30th, 2020. Um, Jeff, enjoy the rest of your evening. Hey, thanks, Tom. You too. Have a great weekend.